1783, the long struggle for American independence was over. In Paris, on September 3rd, a treaty was signed to end the war. Six days later, in Philadelphia, another document was signed, a charter establishing a college on the western frontier at Carlisle, Pennsylvania. It must soon be the first in America. It is the key to our western world. Physician, scientist, statesman, and founder of Dickinson College, Benjamin Rush. The American War is over, but this is far from being the case with the American Revolution. On the contrary, nothing but the first act of the great drama is closed. The momentum is not over. The revolution is not over. We have to live it every day into the future. And by doing that, we are living the spirit of a founder of this country. What people like Rush represented at the time was a thoughtful approach to the role education played in the involvement of a civilization. And I think that that's even more relevant today because of the need with a global economy, tools like the internet, the way in which uh, travel happens, and certainly politics and religion, to have a general understanding of the pervasiveness of those topics in every field. When you have a broad-based education uh, that you can build upon by continuing to learn, by engaging, by uh, questioning things, I think that makes you a, a much more well-rounded person uh, and really sets you up to be a leader in whatever you do uh, in life. Perhaps without realizing at the time, what I learned was how to think, how to read, how to write, how to organize, how to get something done. And these are all skills that are very important in the uh, investment field that I'm now working in. I could not have uh, functioned uh, as I hoped that I did in the Dover trial, or indeed every day as a United States uh, District Court judge, without uh, the superlative educational experience that I had uh, at Dickinson. Our faculty are very dedicated to students. They like interacting with them. And to me, the exciting thing is that they not only enjoy being with them and talking with them, but they find imaginative ways to bring students right into the heart of their own work. You uh, have a chance to really interact with your professor. You're not dealing with TAs. You're not dealing with, with a, a third party in, in, in your education. Here we're sitting on an institution, Dickinson College, that had somebody dreaming about an American type of education that would be forever useful and forever revolutionary. We affect people profoundly through not only the in-class experience, but the out-of-class experience. The world is getting more complex, not less, and we need people who can take insights from multiple fields, think broadly, understand context, understand contending perspectives, and tie things together to create imaginative solutions to problems. That's the kind of useful that we're talking about and that's the kind of useful that the liberal arts are extraordinarily good at when they're done imaginatively. You can learn um, beyond the, the boundaries of a classroom. You know, you learn from others, you learn from your community, and just having an open mind to different ways of teaching others and different ways of learning is very important. I feel like I'm gonna come out of Dickinson as a well-rounded person. I feel like I will be ready for anything, you know? <laughs>
a modern point, the world has gotten larger. And we've always been global, but perhaps our awareness of the rest of the world hasn't been as keen as it is today. I'm from Bucharest, Romania. As an international student, I didn't really have the means to come to visit the campus, and most of my research when applying to colleges was based on what I would see on websites. What attracted me very much to Dickinson was the study abroad program, especially the one in uh, Bologna, Italy, the one that I'm actually going to attend next year. The, the emphasis here on foreign languages is so important because it enables you to function on the global scale. It's critical that you are able to speak more than one language. I'm learning a different language, uh, the fourth or the fifth. I could be walking around at any moment of the day and just bump into someone and they're speaking, uh, say, Arabic or uh, German's a frequent language, French. And uh, so you do, you have a global sense even though you are in Carlisle. I don't speak French very much these days, but every so often I run into a patient here who doesn't know how to speak English and I can go through all the languages I can sort of speak, and if it happens to be French, we can actually have an entire, I can do an entire history and physical in French. And, you know, the last time I learned French was college. The critical issues are, can our students understand the rest of the world? How do we educate them to have global perspective? Something that Dickinson does uniquely well. In many aspects, Dickinson College is more internationally minded than any other American college or university. We have come farther, faster, than almost any of our peer institutions, and it puts us in a place to do exceptional things in pioneering where higher education needs to go with global ed. Well, in December of 2004, I received on my docket the case of Kitzmiller uh, versus Dover Area School District. I rendered a decision in that case which essentially would not allow the policy that had been adopted by the school board which involved intelligent design being injected into the ninth grade uh, biology curriculum. I hope uh, that I am uh, an example of uh, what you can do with a useful uh, education and that you can bring that to bear in everything that you do uh, in your life and that you don't um, duck uh, or avoid an opportunity uh, to, to think uh, in a big way or to tackle uh, large issues in the world. We have the opportunity to be outspoken on the nature of the engagement of our graduates and of our students in being citizen leaders, in being out there and voting and commenting on issues that matter and leading I think Dickinson does, uh, has done over the years uh, a great job in preparing people for successful lives. As you uh, look around, you'll find that there are many Dickinsonians as successful in the professions as, as, as lawyers and doctors and business, uh, entrepreneurs. When you walk through campus, you can see those connections. You, these people are posted around uh, the campus in, in, in different places throughout the student union, throughout the different buildings. Uh, people leave Dickinson and do great things. Students here care about what they do. They're engaged in what's going on in the world, and they are interested not only to see what will happen, but what they can do to influence the future. I would love to do some sort of nonprofit organization in the future, maybe 10, 20 years. Community service is definitely up there. Uh, and I feel like you have to give back to the community. Whatever I do, though, I just want to make sure that I'm always having a good impact on whatever community I'm a member of, uh, whatever individuals I'm working with. Uh, that's perhaps most important. We stand before, as a community, an incredible opportunity, and that is to complete the vision, the dream, to fulfill the destiny of a signer of the Declaration of Independence. I believe that a lot of colleges that are uh, liberal arts uh, institutions, while obviously we respect them greatly, they never really broke with England. I mean, higher education in the United States really never had the revolution. For Rush, that first in America, is the understanding of Dickinson College as an institution that was not just important and interesting unto itself. It was an institution that was to provide a model, be a catalyst for American education in general and its future. 
that was first in America, and that's a tremendous responsibility and opportunity. I think that you would be hard pressed to find uh, any entity or institution as old as Dickinson is that is uh, so ardently doing the work that its founders charged and intended it to do. You can't rest on your laurels. You have to constantly be saying, how can we raise the bar here? In addition, to, to make that happen, you have to attract substantial resources. This is a very high stakes game. The capital campaign now underway needs to be successful. And, and we have the friends and alums who can make it successful. The full understanding and appreciation that you get for your Dickinson education uh, really grows uh, over the years. Looking back on it, Dickinson was, was absolutely perfect for me and perfect for many people. It was simply magical. My sister went to Dickinson. I'm hoping my daughter goes to Dickinson. It's, it's going to be her choice, but um, I experienced it in every way as, as just a wonderful thing, which is why I'm giving back today. We see right in front of us the uh, results of what we have um, helped to support. Uh, we see the facilities. We can talk to the students who are in the programs that we've been involved in. The school belongs to all of us. We're all, many of us, I mean, we're alumni. So this is our one college experience. And we want to keep the image of Dickinson and everything it stands for strong. This is our time. This is our moment. The revolution is never over. It is always just beginning. And it begins every day and every evening for this college. That's what we have to fulfill. That is our destiny. Let our people be taught Inside that he does not belong to himself. himself. Let this thought encourage us to perceive Todd Bigger and his family. But let him be taught at the same time as Todd Bigger among his fellow citizens. Let us suppose nothing, though anything remains to be.